Will Ukraine's membership basically overtax the European Union? In all respects, Ukraine's membership creates formidable challenges. When you look at the political side of things, can the unity of the project be maintained economically? Will the existing members and their citizens show enough solidarity with Ukraine? There are formidable economic challenges, post-war reconstruction. And militarily, the EU is not a military actor, but increasingly it acts as if it was on the way to become one. So does the EU need to change itself? The EU probably does need to work through the idea that this is in some incorporating Ukraine in some ways is existential for the EU as well. They do not have the option of not doing it uh, because if they don't do it, it creates such a precedent that shows that Russia through invasion can really dictate uh, the workings of uh, European uh, security on the entire continent. So, so it is Europe, Europe would live in the shadow of Putin's Russia for right. right after. And, and, uh, and if, if uh, Russia manages to get sort of even a partial victory out of Ukraine, uh, you would imagine that other countries will be next. And if it's not a full-scale invasion of other countries, then it will be a lot of meddling, a lot of pushing buttons, constantly provocations. Europe will have to uh, put much more energy into uh, protecting itself than if it manages to defeat, to help Ukraine, safeguard its independence, integrate into the EU and, and, and simply send a clear message to Russia that uh, it cannot uh, undermine European security. So if the EU internalizes this idea, and I think there is some signs that they are coming around to it, that this is existential for the EU, then the task remains to think, how do you uh, make the project continue to be viable? So uh, you do, they do have to think about what uh, the process of accession is going to look like in terms of maybe potentially really multi-speed type of integration. Um, the Albanian prime minister had a really good uh, uh, joke, tongue-in-cheek uh, anecdote about this. And he used this metaphor that EU accession is like getting on, on the bus. And even if you don't have a seat on the bus, the important thing is you're on the bus. Yes. And uh, may, even if the bus is kind of slow, the important thing is the bus is never going to crash like a Russian plane. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Do you believe that the EU needs to become a more credible actor internationally and then in relation to Russia? And therefore, the EU itself needs an army? Security is not uh, my focus, so I don't know if it needs an army, but I think for sure the EU needs more uh, coordination on a security, on, on a common security policy. Even if the actual army coordination still takes place on the NATO level, because most of the EU members are also NATO members, what the EU really needs is to think about how they're going to together figure out what the security interests of, uh, of the EU are. And the challenge for that right now is that we have sort of the Franco-German driver of the EU, uh, but security positions of the different countries differ a lot. It's not just Germany and France, the Scandinavian countries have a different, the Nordic countries have a different uh, view, the Baltic countries, Poland have a different view. So what the EU needs is some uh, decentering and, and uh, a sort of renegotiation of how they're going to come up with this common security policy that's going to maximize and sort of is going to incorporate the positions of all the EU members in a, in a as best as they can.